a Magnus Division, and it gives me unbelievable pleasure to welcome you to my channel. Today we're going to take a look at the concept of mutually assured destruction. So using the nuclear war simulator, I have set up a scenario where the United States launches on Russia and China. China launches on Russia and the United States. And Russia launches on the United States, China, France, and the United Kingdom. You know what? Just to let's throw a little wrench in this. I forgot to actually put that. So I'm going to have the United Kingdom and France target Russia. So let's have a good time. Let's... uh. Take a look at what happens here. Look at that. So the ICBMs, the uh, sub-launch missiles, they all took off. Here we have the bombers. Let's get a bird's eye view there. Looks like France is about to take a little bit of a pounding. Oh, wow. It's a good time. United States still getting hit. And Oklahoma City. Some of the AI targeting on this program is kind of interesting. Like I said, this isn't really good for a war simulator. It's really just good at calculating and estimating casualties for different types of detonations. And that it does remarkably well. That's why I kind of integrate command modded operations alongside this. So if you see some of my other videos, check them out because it'll show a different, um, more of the actual war simulation part of it. This is more the casualty side of it. I think everything's happened here. A little faster just to make sure. All right, let's see what kind of casualties we have here. <clears throat> Man, I don't know about you, but it was a uh, very interesting week for me. So, I have a lot going on in my professional life. And, you know, YouTube is just my kind of hobby life, amateur time like making these videos I got some uh, Mountain Blade 2 Bannerlord I'm gonna put some uh, gameplay out on that uh, really enjoy that it's kind of a different kind of war game simulator type of thing very interesting command modern operations is giving me fits all right look at that so China, which probably isn't too much of a surprise because A, it had a large portion of the Russian and the United States forces attacking it, but also it's very concentrated in its population centers. 206 million casualties, 40 million casualties in Russia, 36 million in the United States, 10 million in France. Take a look at the United Kingdom. Just over 10 million there too. So, mutually assured destruction is kind of like the old press the button type of deal. We all just uh, go at it and swing for the fences. In the 80s, it would have been far more devastating with a ton of much larger stockpiles. Um, having said that, still, there's nothing to dismiss. I mean, what was the worldwide casualties there? Um, look at that. 306 million. Let's see fallout. Let's see China, Let's see Russia. Just terrible. Absolutely devastating. Absolutely terrible. Well, that's mutually assured destruction. I'm going to do a quick one too. So, one thing that's 
kind of fascinated to me is what is the difference between a surface burst and an air burst casualty wise? So I'm going to choose this little part of densely populated area of Los Angeles, Pasadena, all that good stuff kind of area. I'm going to do a single detonation. I'm going to do a let's do a three megaton and let's do from 500 feet. So I'm going to do it right here in this corner. Try to keep it consistent. Oh, good lord. It's rumbling in the house. All right, let's go here. Got your little fireball, all that good stuff. All right. Let's see. 2.8 million. All right, keep that in mind. 2.8 million. So, let's do this again. Let's do a single detonation. Let's go into a surface burst. I'm going to do it at the same location. Ouch! All right, let's see here. 2.4 million fallout. Yeah, it was pretty significant. So you have 2.8 million versus 2.4 million. So let's go one more. This time. I'm going to do a higher burst. So let's go. 1,500. Same location. Check it now. 2.1 million. So diminishing returns. Um, this isn't going to talk about infrastructure damage, anything like that. But when it comes to pure casualties, it looks like there's a diminishing return. So somewhere around that 500 meter seems to be an ideal place for an air burst if you're trying to go for maximum casualties. Surface burst, the ground's going to I think absorb some of it and then once it gets higher and higher it's going to minimize the casualties there either way that's a heck of a lot of dead people so appreciate everybody watching have a great night thank you